This segment is being sponsored by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right, everybody, this segment is being sponsored by our friends at Taylor's Archery. They're located at 100 East Lauderdale Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee. You guys can give Tracy a call at 931-563-7706. Get down there and take him your equipment, let him look over it, and get you set up. If you need a new bow, uh, he can take care of that too. We'll Casey, do it. No problem we'll at all. It. But for tonight, y'all can call him right here at the studio at 615-737-7767. And we'll have the phone lines open through this segment. Uh, so if any of you guys have a, any a question or a comment, uh, give them a call. I mean, a man sitting right here with us tonight. So if you want to, give them a call right now. Uh, while we're waiting on that, Tracy, the uh, this is your time of year right now. I mean, and, and we were talking earlier about the velvet hunt, and that's kind of changed the dynamic of the the busy season it for has. you, hasn't it? It has. So now in in July, you're dealing with what you used to kind of deal with in August and and first of September. Yeah. Uh, like you said, you're going elk hunting this year, and, and you had never been able to do that before uh, because that's it's you know, it just, yeah, that's right. It just doesn't doesn't line up together. Um, man, I'm looking forward to you going on an elk hunt now. You keep us some some pictures, oh, some yeah. videos coming from that. And y'all going to Montana? Is that right? Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Okay. Well, that that's going to be a big time. September, they're going to be bugling. Oh, yeah. Something I've always wanted to do. One of these days, I'll get out there and chase them. So that's going to that's going to be great. I'm looking forward to. To seeing how you do. I hope that. it turns out good, man. <laughs> now you got your buck pin down for the velvet hunt. You gonna get after him in velvet? If something shows up good, maybe it doesn't. I'm so busy this time of year, it doesn't really. I don't really have a lot of time to do yeah. it anyway. I, you know, I kind of, I don't have one that I feel is patterned good enough right now to go after. I've got some good ones showing up, but the way I see it this time of year, if he ain't patterned, the best thing is just leave him alone. Yeah, so I'm kind of leaving him alone right now. We'll see. I like we got a big swelled up next anyway. Color. Yeah, me too. We got Raymond. Raymond, how you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I really like the way you got that farm set up. That's that's sharp. I I appreciate it. We've uh We've worked on that that particular place for about 12 years now, but just about anywhere we go, we try to try to manage them as good as we can. Well, my question is: Is it illegal to hunt over a bait bait on deer? Yes, it, you can't hunt over over bait in the state of Tennessee. You can't have um, any kind of grain, corn, food, you know, things like that put out. Uh, the reason I say that is you can have a salt lick. Uh, or a mineral site, but you've got to make sure that there's not food value in it. Uh, sometimes you can get a mineral block that'll have, say, like corn or grain mixed in with it, and you can't use those. Well, what if you raked up acorns at one part of the year and then put them out at another part? It, that's Would still that that's still considered baiting. Yes, that's illegal. If you well, if what? you place it there, if if you place it there yourself, it is considered baiting. Okay. Well, what's the difference between putting out food plots for them then? The way that they list food plots by law in the book is it's got to be done under what's called a standard agricultural practice. So if you have okay. prepped the field, turned the field, and planted it, at that point it, it becomes legal by the books. Okay. And my question, other questions for your partner over there, I'm not much on bow hunting, and I'd like to get me a crossbow. Could he kind of guide me on a first-time book? crossbow hunter and what to get and I'll get off here and listen to you talk. Absolutely. Thank you for calling. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah, Raymond. Ab absolutely, man. Just uh, get a chance. Come down. We'll take you back into our indoor range. Let you try a couple out. See what you think about them. It's a it's a very proficient weapon. You just got to realize it's still archery. It's 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 not That's a gun. Right. It's yeah. it's still a it's still a close range game. It is. And we appreciate you calling, Raymond. Who do we have on two? Terry, how are you doing tonight? Hey, what do you say there, Brandon? How you doing? Hey, Terry, how you doing, Terry Peoples? Oh, fella, I'm just hanging in there. I was going to call you there. I, my ears kind of perked up there when you said something about them sauger. Yeah. Are you catching them in the river, or are you just catching them in the deep part of the lake? The lake. Uh, we have caught a few in the river, uh, but it's been a few weeks. The ones that we were catching these last couple of weeks have all been on the lake. And uh, in, in, you hit it right on the head, the deep parts of the lake. I'm finding them, I'm, I'm catching them at night. Now, you can catch them during the day, but I get enough sweat during the day kind of like you do. Uh, so I've been going right. at night. We're fishing deeper water uh, on Cordell Hole, Center Hill, and finding places where there's, you know, a little current flow and mostly 30 foot of water 
I would say it would be the average, and they're sus they've been suspended a little bit, but 25, they're still 20 to 25 feet down, the most of them that we've been catching. All right, well, we've still been catching crappie there in about 18, 8 to, eight, eight to 18 foot of water. Yeah. Uh, you know, three here, five there, but they're still there. Yeah. But we ended up, I think, with like 40 come Monday, me and old dude. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm going to listen to y'all, and I'm going to leave them big them big rabbits to y'all, and I'm going to just sit back and listen to you. All right, Terry. Good talking to you, buddy. All right, look. All right. How you doing tonight, Mr. Randall Haley? I'm doing good, man. I'm enjoying this uh, live streaming on this telephone. I can't get you on the, it, on the TV. It, I don't have that channel. I'm, I'm sitting out here on the porch and... Just enjoying myself. Isn't that wonderful? Since we added that, Randall. Oh yeah. I, I yeah. was uh, I was telling Tracy about that earlier, and and uh, matter of fact, Tom Port he just came in the door, and I was telling him at lunch today. We've added that link, and what he's talking about, folks, is on on Facebook. We put it up every week, but there's a live link now uh, that people can watch us that way. And, and Randall doesn't have five plus where he's at, and he can watch the show on the link. So y'all be sure to tell your friends that for some reason they can't to go over to our Facebook page and they catch us on the link. You've been watching a bunch of deer out there in the yard tonight, Randall. Uh have. and Tom Courtney come in there tonight with food, didn't he? He did. He's he's, he's got <laughs> he all your favorite stuff with there. him. <laughs> he knew you hey, were. uh, have y'all mentioned the archery tournament that, that's going on September the 12th yet? I know Mr. Taylor's having a little bit to do with that. I, I think he's talking I, about the one that you shared the other day. Um, yeah, I don't think it's the, unless they've changed it, I don't think it's the 12th, I think it's the 5th. I tell you what we'll do, we'll check on that. When we go to our next break, Randall, we'll check on that date because I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but I, yeah, th I yeah, think the date might wanna... be the week before that. The 5th would be yeah, Saturday. Of course, the 12th would too. We'll yeah. find that out. He's, he's getting on his on his find it all over there, and he'll find out the information real quick, Randall. Are you going to try to get okay. down there to the tournament? Hey, I'm going to be there. I'm a, I grew up in old Cannon and Cannon Boy over in Ivy Bluff, not far from Tullahoma. Dad used to go to Tullahoma all the time. Okay. But uh, I'm going to be there. Uh, regardless of what I do, I used to shoot a lot of archery tournaments, and I loved it. I shot double A class in the bow hunters with Pasanabe. But yeah. I hadn't shot in in a while, but I'm probably still come down there and beat one or two people. Yeah, so. <laughs> you probably could, Randall. I believe you probably could. I haven't shot one myself in a long time uh, either, but I sure did used to enjoy it. We shot yeah. tournaments all over the place. I was really involved with Old Hickory Lake Bowman down there off Shoots Lane and uh, did a lot with them. I shot in Hendersonville a lot and Bassanaby like you mentioned. Uh, that's, yeah. You know, there's a lot of these tournaments that people can get involved in on the weekend. I mean, from just the yeah. Nashville area and a radius, it's, you know, it's, it, they find something every weekend. It blows my mind, the people that hunt that don't go shoot 3D archery. Yeah. Because it's the best yeah. practice. You're literally going to, anybody can be a hero in their own backyard, but That's when you right. go shoot somebody else's setup, yeah. it, it, it shows yeah. your weak points. You know how you know how good you are then. Yep, that's yeah. exactly right, Mr. Taylor. And it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's, it's educational. And you learn a lot about your bow, how it performs, and uh, yardage. That's one of the biggest things. If you're the best shot in the world and you don't know how to judge the yardage, now you you know we got range finders now. I've got one. We've all got one. We also know if you've hunted long enough, you don't always have a chance. Batteries die. Yeah, or the batteries <laughs> die at the worst oh, yeah. possible time. You drop uh, it. You got to be able to judge yardage and and those tournaments for me uh, to this day uh, it helped me you know yeah, just all the tournaments that I shot it helps me determine and I don't look out there and just say that's 40 yards you know I look at all right I know that right there's about 10 yards that right there's 20 you know so on and so forth and that you know that's how I determine yardage but you got to get quick at that you know in a hunting situation yeah, yeah. you learn to watch for them sticks and twigs too hey I said something about Tullahoma there a while ago that just was uh where his archery place is, the tournament is going to be in Murfreesboro. Yes, sir. So okay, don't, that's the Woods Viking. Don't let me confuse yes, anybody. Yeah, that's right, it, and it's the Woods Viking tournament. And like I said, yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's just I don't have the date right here in front of me, but we will have it here in a minute. We'll, and we'll let you and everybody else know since you can sit there on the porch and watch us now. Yeah, I'm watching, boy. <laughs> don't mess up. <laughs> oh, man, how about you, Randy? Uh, you, you, you got a uh, you got old deer tied up for Devin to shoot and come bow season? 
Nah, he'll he'll get one somewhere. He, he he'll uh he's been looking at a couple right here. I don't know, we ain't never killed one here, but he uh he did sneak out here one time when his grandmama wasn't watching him he shot a doe. <laughs> back when it was a little old bitty boy with a bow and arrow. Yeah. And uh but he uh, here he comes up the drive now. But uh we got some and heck of deer everywhere now, you know. They but are. that uh that that archery thing, that's a good deal that they're doing to get that boy some money. And I'm gonna be there regardless of what I do, I'm gonna be there and have fun, talk to people. Well, that's great, Randall. I, I believe I'll try to keep my schedule open for it that day, too. And, we, and we're, again, we'll check on that date here in a minute let everybody know. Thanks for calling, okay. buddy. I'll talk to you okay. here soon. All right. We'll see you all. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. All right. Some good calls tonight. I enjoyed that. Guys, let's go on over and do this week's tip of the week. This week's tip of the week is being sponsored by Phoenix Custom Quality Rods. You guys can find all their lineup at phoenixrods.com. Right here in the state of Tennessee, give my buddy Jim Brewer a call at 931-213-1455 and let him put a Phoenix rod in your hand today. All right. Guys, I've asked Tracy to do a tip for us tonight. What do you have for us tonight? Uh, we was talking about strings a while ago. So this is something probably have a friend help you with. But draw your bow back and at full draw, Look and see if any strands on your string just look loose. Because if it is, you've got a string that's breaking on you. I've had it happen to me before, and it will drive you crazy with peep rotation. You know, change your point of impact. I had a. This has been many years ago, but I had a bow that had a 24 strand string on it. That's what we used to have to do to keep the stuff from stretching. And uh, it was constantly just shifting point of impact on me. I finally cut the serving off. And I had six strands that weren't broke. I had 18 strands that were broke. And, but you wow. just, everything was held together so tight you couldn't see yeah. it happening. Yeah, right. So it's, if you, you have something draw, odd like that happening, that's a good chance. That's what it is. Yeah, and when you, I guess when you come to full draw, it opens up the strings yeah. enough to show it those takes, strands. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, that's a great tip. It really is. Thank you for that one. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have got this week's recipe of the week for you guys and some more Southern Woods and Waters.